Next up on stage, we have um, Siddhant Agarwal. Uh, and Siddhant is the Developer Relations Lead at Open Financial Technologies. And Siddhant is an old hand at the public speaking. He's done over 200 national and international speaking events um, to students, developers, uh, and other groups over the last five years. Um, and Sidan is going to be talking to us about the API economy in financial services sector. So welcome onto the stage, uh, Sidan, and over to you and welcome. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks so much, Ian. Um, let's get started. Cool. Um, just a round of introduction once again. My name is Sidan and I work as Developer Relations Lead at Open Financial Technologies. Um, brief about what we do at Open. At Open, we are building Zwitch.io. It's an embedded finance platform where we firmly believe that financial services are a means to an end, not an end in themselves. And it's only a matter of time before a majority of them will be delivered contextually within an existing product or service, driving better engagement, retention, monetization, or process improvement in the concerned product or service that we're talking about. So <clears throat> over in this particular talk, um, I'm going to uh, talk about how APIs have kind of transformed the entire fintech domain, the entire financial services domain, the, the industry in itself. Um, how how this how this revolution actually started off um, with the APIs and how um, with with couple of uh, examples and case studies and uh, how this is really helpful uh, for not just fintech companies but also for the non fintech companies. So. With this, let's get started. Uh, those are my credentials. Uh, that's my Twitter handle over there if you would like to get connected. Um, before I talk about how APIs are transforming the financial services domain, I would like to touch upon um, what API economy is, um, how APIs influence the banking and the financial services industry. Uh, but just before that, what API economy is. So in today's competitive environment, firms seeks to increase their growth opportunities. They improve their client uh, experience, reduce costs, and enhance operational efficiency. To solve this common problem and get moving faster, APIs, the application programming interface, we, the entire day we're going to talk about APIs. So APIs will be the uh, front face, the, the, they'll get the spotlight today. So they have opened up new opportunities in the fintech industry to offer innovative banking and financial solutions for companies to integrate financial functions within existing operations very seamlessly okay so what what api economy refers to it's the exchange of value between the consumers and providers with the help of apis so in other words if i have to say it donates how apis help achieve positive profitability for businesses and to accomplish so companies can use apis to create new avenues by transforming existing product or services we're not talking about like creating new products um how the or the existing product can be transformed, which can generate new revenues or additional sources of revenue. So APIs have killed the wait time that goes into building products or services from scratch. But you must be wondering, like APIs have been here for decades. Why I'm re like recently talking about APIs? What's so new about it? Uh, why there's a sudden interest or a growing interest in APIs um, at this point of time? Well, the primary reason for this increased interest is the stellar growth in cloud computing. The advancements and adoption of cloud computing have empowered companies to quickly and easily integrate APIs into their products and services. Like over the past decade, the innovative power of APIs has led to realization that APIs can be a critical component for enterprise solutions, right? Uh, but how it can really impact business bottom line or growth and innovation, that's what APIs have been really helpful in in the recent times. Okay, uh, let's take an example uh, to understand API economy a little better. So we'll, we'll cover up with two examples. So co considering an example of a cab aggregator like Uber or uh, or, or its Indian counter counterpart like Ola. So these apps have disrupted the entire transportation industry without even creating the large part of underlying technology powering these apps, which is Google Maps, right? So they have enabled customers to book a cab with ease in just a few smartphone taps without having to build its mapping system by simply combining Google Maps APIs with their proprietary product. So all they did is they took Google Maps APIs, they had their product, they integrated it together. That's it. 
Furthermore, you can check your vehicle availability. You can confirm booking. You can make payments using credit card or receive notifications of vehicle arriving. And all the credit goes to the APIs at work over here. Now let's understand this APIs, how the APIs are functioning in a multinational fast food provider like McDonald's. So when you crave a McD burger these days, um, you have few options to order it from, right? So rather than visiting the nearest outlet, you can either order it on a McD app or order on a food delivery app. Like in India, we have uh, Zomato, um, or Swiggy, or the other food delivery apps. So you can order it on the on on those apps, or you can order it on a McD app. Or the option is like you can go to the McD outlet. If you think about uh, it from McDonald's perspective, the most cost-effective and easily scalable option would be ordering the burger via a food delivery app. There, it will save them the real estate cost, customer acquisition cost, and operational and delivery costs by partnering with the food delivery apps and services. However, the only downside is that the McD might have to share a part of their revenue with the food delivery app. Again, all the credit goes to the APIs at work uh, that are doing the, uh, doing the action behind the scenes. And these programming interfaces have helped companies like Uber or um, Indian food delivery apps like Zomato to work together with millions of businesses to create more revenue than either of them could get if they have been doing this independently, right? So this is how um, APIs have been transforming various industries um, in the current times, food delivery or uh, uh, the, uh, the cab aggregator or the logistics industry and the various industries. But how does APIs power fintech? So let's let's dive into into that aspect now, where. We're talking about the banking transformation, which is driven by APIs these days. Rather than reinventing the wheel, the use of open APIs has enabled third-party organizations and developers, which is your fintech service providers, to build apps and services around the financial institutions, which is our banks, existing architecture. So what is happening is uh, the fintech service providers are building on top of what the bank's architecture is there. So the focus in today's agile environment is on providing solutions directly to consumers through innovation and better user experience. So earlier, the traditional banking infrastructure used to be a closed ecosystem. So if you look at some of these banking products um, that, that's being shown over here, like your savings accounts, your current accounts, so those were um, those were like in the exclusive purview of the banks. The banks only provided standard banking products like these like loans, like credit cards, recurring deposits, fixed deposits, forex cards, etc. And later even banks started to adopt an app-based strategy to access banking services via websites and apps. So this was the same thing that we were uh, discussing in the earlier example as well. Earlier, McDonald's had just the outlets. Then they came up with their own applications, uh, their apps and websites to order it from. And later on, they partnered with the food delivery apps. So can you think of something very similar in the financial services domain where the banking products can be um, sold or can be like uh, provisioned to the end consumer via a third party organization or fintech service provider? Well, practically, yes, because of the APIs. So the API driven economy has transitioned the traditional banks from just being financial products builders to financial solutions orchestrators. So they have adapted to a customer-centric world by modernizing the core banking systems and fintech organizations. So what is happening is by embedding financial services, both banks and companies deploy them can learn valuable information about the users, making lending and insurance writing more efficient while enabling providers to offer more targeted services. The more the data it is, the more efficiently this process works. So this means that in the future, we are likely to see a redefinition of how merchants interact with customers. Maybe they are offering personalized banking, uh, maybe discounts on your banking, uh, based on your banking uh, behavior, as well as maybe accurate loans. So it's a win-win-win for everyone involved. Banks benefit by white labeling their services. Consumer benefit because purchasing is a lot more seamless and convenient. And merchants benefit because conversions increase and costs are often a lot cheaper. So APIs have enabled banks to become data-driven institutes that provide a broader range of products directly to customers from the platform of their choice, rather than they are restricting it to them, which used to happen in the earlier times. So to, the, to their customers, APIs have tied the banks and the fintech companies together by allowing banks to exchange data with API banking service providers. So in this way, 
fintech companies can support their existing products and develop modern solutions on traditional banking infrastructure so again i'm not saying the banking infrastructure will go away the banking infrastructure will still be there the traditional banking infrastructure will still continue existing it's just that uh, the banks have now a wider platform to reach out to more consumers via these fintech companies because they have a larger base they have a bigger consumer base so these products and solutions can be seamlessly integrated with other organizations using apis let's understand how um, this behind the scenes action is happening how banking as a service is happening uh, will this break it down into just two steps uh, first one banks develop apis for its products and services and external externalize them so that a partner who could be a third party who would be a technology service provider api banking service provider can use those apis and through apis banks will pretty much govern the product the same way in the mcdonald's example mcdonald's is pretty much governing the product while the food delivery app is kind of provisioning it to the consumer so to take in a example in a in a banking domain um, in india we have upi um, banks upi apis uh, if they are provisioning it to a payment aggregator they won't give a check account balance api to it you can just the payment aggregator can just facilitate payment coming in payment coming out that's it but they won't have a check balance api but banks offer it only to a psp application who is, who is building a psp application for example in india we have google pay and also do not expect all banks to have like ready made apis a uh, few few banks have done substantial investments in bank in developing apis for third parties but few have not uh, plus few banks are pretty flexible um, and few are rigid for any kind of customization so um, ultimately it's uh, it's bank and also the third parties who are consuming it that that are that are the major players in this entire api economy in financial services so as part of step 2 what happens is once the banks expose these apis um third parties consume these apis and launch their products they can launch a new bank they can even offer those apis further to end customers so that's what embedded finance is all about so they can think of doing this on their own as well they can integrate uh, okay so they can integrate with the banking api directly but efforts will increase if the merchant wants to add multiple banks so alternatively a merchant can use a payment aggregator or a third party service provider's api who in turn would have integrated with multiple banks so it's 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 all interconnected via apis now how is banking and financial apis can help organizations to gain benefits uh, like you can have improved customer experience you can make continuous innovation you can launch products to market faster you can realize new revenue opportunities more quickly and many more with less cost and what is rich.io is helping it's helping businesses build their banking services by embedding financial financial products like your upi your insurance your credit line payments cards bank accounts compliance investments and payroll in the user journey so transforming into the embedded finance model um, enables these businesses to give a wide range of banking options to their customers making the products stickier so hence customers interact a lot more with the product and end up doing banking activities through it it will help businesses earn more than just the platform fee for their customers okay so with such apis businesses can open virtual accounts um, they can open up current accounts or savings accounts uh, for their customers on the go they can collect payments um, from customers seamlessly by upi nft imps or rtgs they can reconcile payments incoming payments from multiple customers you can validate um, kyc like your uh, pan your aadhar which is the unique id in india uh, kyc data in bank account details of a uh, customer instantly and much more so that I, i just wanted to touch in a brief about what switch apis are all about um, but all i'm trying to convey over here is how uh, embedded finance is kind of the new 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 thing that's going to come up in the next few years um so what are we waiting for just come and build your own banking platform you can build your own neo bank itself via these apis it's pretty simple um all you have to go do is just sign up on the dashboard um da uh, the link is over here this dashboard.zwist.io you have the dev, uh, api docs link over also over here developers.zwist.io/reference so 
the moment you sign up, you get an access to Sandbox environment. You start integrating into your product um, or service. And then later on, um, once you're ready to go live, um, you can switch between the Sandbox and the live mode itself. Um, of course, um, we are focused heavily around developers, and we have a developer community as well. So if you would like to get connected with us or have any questions to our developers, you can join a Slack channel. We do a lot of regular community events around um, embedded finance and how it cuts across various industry verticals, how it looks from a developer's lens, how embedded finance uh, kind of uh, uh, fits into um, applications like Flutter, how a Flutter app can be used to collect and make payments. So you can join this communal community um, to stay connected with us and be part of our uh, upcoming events. You can um, connect with us on our social media handle as well. Um, but yes, uh, there is one more thing I want to talk about is uh, is a quick demo. Let me just switch to my screen. Just one second. Okay. All right. So this is a, this is a short demo of um, how how simple and easy it is to build your own neo bank come up with 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 a, with a concept where you can embed or offer financial services into your existing platform so i just build a build a small demo which creates virtual accounts in the fly it's pretty simple you can create these virtual accounts to collect payments um, uh, like as a collection tool let's say you are an nbfc you have recurring payments coming in and you want these emis to come into your account and uh, get transferred to your like come into your virtual account and then get transferred to your primary uh, current account or something. Uh, but you don't want to get in the hassle of reconciliation every now and then because of demand and it's super tough for the businesses to do reconciliation. That's where virtual accounts can really help in um, reconcile your incoming payments. You can create it as a wallet as well. Um, think of it, uh, a customer is transacting on your website and uh, loads up the wallet um, part, part of the money that's being loaded can be used for the transaction the part can still remain in the wallet can be used for future transactions or if there any refund to be processed you can transfer the refund the wallet itself instead of transferring to the um, actual source of uh, uh, source of payment so uh, this is how virtual accounts as a concept is really really powerful these days um, how it is helping businesses uh, think of uh, making it easier for the customers to come to the platform, making the product stickier. Virtual accounts is just one part of it. You can help um, with the API. You can even open up savings accounts for your customers. You can open up current accounts for your customers. So instead of asking your customer that, hey, first you go and open up a savings account and current account, then come over to our platform, link it, and then you're good to go. Uh, why don't you create their savings accounts and current accounts via these APIs itself? So ultimately, you're creating a new bank of your own. So, all right. So let me show you this quick example. I have pre-filled information for you. Um, just some very basic information. Um, I've, I've just picked in our uh, host uh, name, uh, Ellen. And it's a random number that I put in, random email ID, just for the test purpose over here. So it generates virtual account uh, number. So the moment I click on virtual account number and VPA, it actually generates a VPA for Ellen. You can see over here, um, so we are powered by Yes Bank in India, which helps us create these um, virtual accounts on the fly. It's created a virtual account number and the IFSC code, which can be you, which can be shared with the another customer uh, to load the money, or you can even give the VPA handle to load the money. So, for example, let's let's use this VPA handle, and what we are gonna do is we are gonna um, load money to this particular VPA handle and do an update balance. Very similar to any other PSP app or a UPI app or any of the applications that you might have been using it as of now, uh, which does the same thing. So, all right. So let's just put in the name, VPA, and it generates a QR code. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use uh, one of the PSP app, uh, one of the UPI app in my on my phone, and I'm going to scan this QR code and transfer one INR, a penny um, in India. All right, so that's being 
that's in the process right now. Okay, this is so I've transferred. Um, even even if I go back and look into the accounts, uh, that that's my Swiss dashboard, by the way, um, where I can like the moment I signed up and I'm creating the accounts via these APIs, I can see what all accounts have been created. I can manage my keys. I can view my primary account, primary VA balance. So whatever the uh, virtual accounts that have been created after like like under under my primary VA, I can see them listed over here. And you can see over here, um, there's an account that's been created. You can open up, you can see this closing balance of one INR, which has been just deposited now. It's Everything is happening live. Uh, I'm not in the sandbox mode. I'm in the live mode as of now, just deposited. That's how simple is it, uh, it is and how easy it is to like create virtual accounts for your customers on the fly. If I go back and do an update balance, you can see the balance reflects as one INR. So yes that's how simple it is and with this let me just switch back to my deck just a second all right cool um so moving on next uh that that was just a brief about what switches and uh, happy to get connected later on but let's talk about what the future looks like. So uh, the ultimate goal of the API economy in financial services is to meet business challenges. It facilitates the creation of user-focused apps that support line of business goals and improve the flow of data and information across operations. So the emergence of API-driven platform economy will drive significant changes across the financial services domain, and no one can afford to stand still. APIs will become tools that will allow fintech companies to enable connectivity between traditional banks and the consumers while inspiring innovative developers to create new products, improve existing services, and work more efficiently. Well, I have dived recently into fintech and I really found it exciting enough um, to get started with something innovative, something unique. Um, so think of um, the possibilities that, that it unlocks. Uh, why are these APIs? You can think of creating a new bank for um, underserved, like uh, LGBTQ, or maybe for women, or for underprivileged, uh, maybe for elders, for senior citizens. You can think of creating uh, uh, a new bank for uh, uh, maybe for uh, gig economy workers. Uh, you can think of creating new bank for uh, your uh, blue collared workers. You can think of creating new bank for X. So that's X is something I would let you take care of and um, think of building solutions via APIs, um, FinTech solutions via APIs. So that's it uh, from my side. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, again, that's my Twitter handle if you wish to get connected. Thanks very much, Sid. That was uh, a really informative um, talk on uh, the APIs that you have with Switch. Um, with the account management in the back end and where the accounts are actually stored, do you support a range of different banks, uh, core banking solutions, or is it a you would need to then go and, and have some development effort to wire these APIs up to where the account management and product management and customer management sits? Uh, no, actually not. So um, that we have, we have done the hard work for uh, for the businesses. So think of it, we, we kind of lie at the intersection of a business who wants to embed or offer financial services and the traditional banking institution. So we just lie at the center of it. So we we are helping in money moving in, money moving out via these APIs. So we have we have already integrated with the banks. We have multiple banking integrations. So we have a relationship with more than 18 plus banks <clears throat> uh, with which we consume bank APIs. And we later on expose our APIs to businesses to build their own solutions, to build their own products. So they can come up with their own white labeled neo bank of their own. Um, instead of doing the hard work of reaching out to the bank. And oftentimes the banks will say no because you don't have a credibility. You, you uh, Banks will ask you for um, a collateral. Banks will ask you for um, security. So um, the small businesses who really want to reach out to their consumers and offer like build their own fintech arm but don't have enough of bandwidth or don't have enough of uh, credibility to reach out to the banks directly 
they can reach out to us and take our APIs and serve the purpose. Yep. So ultimately, you've got a number of financial institutions that you've already uh, linked up. Um, would, uh, would would somebody who was coming along and use these get the ability to select and know about the, the financial institution um, and potentially be able to build up a portfolio view of different accounts that a customer has? Correct. Correct. So the example, um, our virtual account APIs are powered by Yes Bank in India. Uh, we guess we do have partnered with the ICICI Bank for virtual account APIs. For savings account APIs, we have partnered with the State Bank of Mauritius um, and also with Equitas Finance Bank. It's a, it's a small finance bank in India. Uh, similarly, for current account as well, we have partnered with the State Bank of Mauritius and Equitas Bank. Uh, sorry, not just uh, sorry with just uh, State Bank of Mauritius. But yes, we we are uh, we are we have already integrated with the other banks. So let's say if tomorrow a business asks us that hey we want um, the current account APIs uh, from X bank, we can easily enable that for them. We can tell them okay this is the APIs, these are the endpoints, these are this is how the APIs work, and on the back end we will enable this this banking in, uh, integration for this particular bank for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and from a jurisdictional viewpoint, how how do you see these APIs transferring into different markets? You know, whether it's say South America or North America or Europe or wherever. Yeah, so we are in fact in talks with a um, couple of uh, businesses in Southeast Asia um, who are thinking in the same lines, who wants to. So in fact, um, uh, what, what is happening is the banking infrastructure is not that great, be it in India or be it in other um, geographies. It might be really good in um, European countries or in, um, uh, in the North American market, but um, and to some extent South Asian, uh, Southeast Asian market. But uh, still, there is a long way to go. The banks also need some support, that some tech support. So what we are doing is we also help banks also to build that tech support, uh, which they can later on expose it to the bank uh, to the businesses. So um, uh, in terms of uh, reaching out to other markets like Australia, uh, yes, definitely we are seeing that the transformation where banks have uh, are kind of moving into the open banking API movement. Uh, they are ready to expose their APIs. They, if they don't have the APIs, they work with some some technology partner and start exposing these APIs, with which people can then. Uh, so uh, ultimately, what what banks also need is uh, an ROI on their investment, what they have done, right? They also need a return on it. Uh, they put in so much efforts in that retail outlet, the branches that they have created, but um, if they don't have enough customers falling in. And uh, these these uh, these companies, these new banks, and um, challenge uh, these other um, uh, small fintech players, um, small medium big fintech players. They already have captured in a lot of uh, consumer base. So if or even non fintech players, like for example, uh, Amazon started off with Amazon Pay. Uh, not sure if they are in uh, Australia, but at least in India they have this fintech arm of their own, Amazon Pay. Google, uh, when they kicked off, they kicked off with just search engine. Now they have a fintech arm, which is Google Pay. So, so and so forth. Every company is now kind of thinking in how they can uh, cater to their consumers who who are looking for uh, financial transactions, uh, but still, uh, like they they don't have enough muscle, so they can reach out to any third party service provider to take their APIs, which have consumed the bank APIs, or they can reach out to the banks directly, and that's yeah. what happened. The banks have started uh, giving out their APIs in an open banking uh, API movement um, so that these companies, fintech or non-fintech companies, can start consuming them and cater to their consumer. In, a, in, in turn, banks are getting benefited because their banking products are being utilized. Um, they are, their infrastructure, which, is, which they have already put in so much investment, they are getting a return out of it. Absolutely. Well, I think that kind of wraps us up for the time. Uh, so I'd just like to thank you uh, again for that uh, presentation. Very informative. Um, and take any questions directly afterwards um, via the chat. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Bye. Take care.